Hey folks, and welcome back to Patia, Dark Side Patia again today. Uh, uh, what this is about is in recent months, actually probably over the last year, the uh, street dog or soy dog population has really increased in Patia. A lot of people have contacted me and wanted to talk about that. Um, v met a lady though, that that's kind of what she does is kind of work to abate that problem and we're going to go around with her today and learn a little bit about that and see if we can help her out a little bit as well so uh i went a place i would have rather not gone but let's jump into it you'll see so today we've come out to help the dogs and they've come out to welcome us so v contacted this this lady on facebook it's like a shelter for uh, animals or something and she said, oh, we're gonna go out there today, give them a little support. I said, okay, what time? I got it. She did everything. So we saddled up, we came out here. She sent the location via line. I went right to the exact coordinates that she sent. That's not where the place is, that's her home. <laughs> that's how things go. So now we're waiting for her to meet us here. But that'll probably be a while. But there was so many dogs back there, I thought that was the place. <laughs> so we got a pretty good plate of food while we're waiting here. I don't know how long we have to wait or where we're going. But she says the place had hundreds, literally hundreds of dogs that's on really rough times right now. Uh, dog population has gotten a little bit out of hand in Patia as well right now. Certain parts, not everywhere, not everywhere by any means. But there's certain parts where they're really getting um, a little bit bad because I don't think they have as many people feeding them and they get a little bit more uh, desperate so they get a little bit more aggravating and then the the shelters are overbooked and it's a it's a it's another domino effect um, once one part of the ecosystem uh, goes wrong it kind of trickles down to the rest so there are places out there doing what they can to help so we'll see uh, we'll see what they need see what their plight is and have them explain it from their their perspective what it is a little bit I guess V didn't get enough juice so it's almost unbelievable as we're sitting here waiting oh, there's a bunch of dogs running around here as well and one got hit literally right here next to the little uh, food stall, little restaurant thing right here. And I saw the tire run over his neck, the front tire. He got, he was under the car, he was wedged under the car. A bunch of the guys lifted the car. He scooched out. He's just got a couple scrapes, probably a bruise or two. Looks okay, he's running around. Unbelievable, but it could have been a lot worse. So yeah, how ironic that would happen on a day when we're shooting an episode like this. But anyway, finally our lady showed up and we'll, we'll hear her side of this before we take off and see what she wants to show us. What's, what's happened now in Patia is uh, the more dog, I see more dogs. Yes. So why, why have more dog now? Why have more dog? Because no sterilization. Uh. We don't have like fun, we don't have money to pay because they are dif difficult to catch. Uh, uh, not, not, not very easy, nah. Uh, they're the one that easy to catch. We already catch. You know, <laughs> everywhere. Uh, so when everything okay in Patia, mm. they have money to do more the steril uh, sterilization. Uh, but now maybe one and a half years, no COVID, COVID no yeah. sterilization. No. Then you have more, uh, yeah. more dog. Mm. And uh, people dump the dog. It's People from different province, provinces, they went back to their home. So oh, and just let the dog go? Right. Oh. Because they don't have money to pay for transportation to go back to... to I know. see. Yeah. With the big outflux of people, they, they had pet dogs or dogs they were taking care of, just say. Maybe they had adopted a dog or what. They go back to their, their province, back to where, in the countryside, wherever they live. They just leave the dog here. Now it's another dog not being taken care of. Plus the uh, kind of uh, effect for a long time, now 18 months with these programs not having the, 
the, the funds to sterilize the dog. That's a big thing they do. They go out, they round up dogs, they sterilize them, spay, neuter, whatever. And that process is pretty cheap here, and we're going to see if we can sponsor some. But that has caused a little bit of an explosion in the population. I think both things, coupled with the fact that people giving up and going home and not taking, not taking the dog with them, and the lack of sterilization, the population has noticeably risen. I try to feed them, but I don't have uh, energy anymore. What is the worst spot right now? The worst. The worst place have uh, most dogs. The worst. The worst place, la. Oh, the tung này đi là everywhere. Every. Actually. With the, with the exodus of people, the dogs are left behind, and they literally get left behind. Anyway, we're gonna go see, we're waiting for the guy. Uh, we'll see kind of what they do and uh, we'll try to help this lady out a little bit. And uh, both with the, the feeding and with the sterilization and just kind of another a whole dimension of thing going on here. I have had a lot of people contact me and say, hey, the soy dog problem's really out of control in Patio, why don't you talk about that? And it is kind of, but I think there's more pressing things going on, but it is kind of uh, sad, and, and, it, and I was wondering why myself. It's not just that, uh, oh, some, some people stop feeding them. It's the sterilization. It's the people leaving them behind. So much more of a systemic problem than what I thought. So, yeah, I, I guess she would be the one to know, and uh, wealth of information. Everything she said made sense to me. I, I, I just thought that maybe some people gave up uh, feeding the dogs and the dogs wandered off somewhere and a lot of people don't have pets per se here they just kind of have dogs that hang around their house or their business that they feed there, there are some that have proper pets and keep them indoors and everything else but there's a lot of the other as well so anyway we saddled up and she brought us out here to this little village and that's where she's going to feed and, and get some dogs spayed today so a big part of what they do she feeds them. I'll show you. She feeds them. She goes around everywhere to feed dogs. But and she knows other people that do as well. But <laughs> um, she comes to places like this, these villages. These, this is a very, very poor, very basic village. And she'll come out here with the, some of these, these guys from the Animal Army, the Silly Dog Foundation. And they will, they got these big cages. They will, I guess, lure, the, lure some of the animals into the cage after they feed them. But that keeps the population down. That's really the first line of defense. Um, so they can run around and, and enjoy themselves, but you won't have a bunch of puppies because one dog, they say five, six, seven puppies is not uncommon. So all part of it. But I tell you, it's so hot in this village. All these shacks are made out of like some kind of galvanized steel. And I don't know if it's the heat or sun reflecting off them. It's just so hot right here. <laughs> it's not that hot today, but until we came back to this village. So these kinds of places can probably least afford to do something like this. That's why they get the help first. So yeah, I guess, I guess no day would be complete without another misunderstanding. I thought these, these injections here is what uh, sterilized or spayed the, the dog. And th that's not the case at all. I just... Uh, <laughs> I misunderstood it. That's just to put the animal to sleep. So sometimes what they experience is the dogs are hard to catch. They're hard to lure into the cage. Uh, I think these, uh, these soy dogs, these street dogs, are smarter than the average dog. <laughs> they, they have to be living the way they do almost. So, so far he's rounded up two dogs. They got enough shots for four. They said a lot, there's a lot more, but they don't come out right now because it's too hot, and it is hot. Um, some of them just run away, one just ran away there. It's almost like they know who these guys are, but I think they're just skittish, and they don't want to come out. They want to stay back in the shade somewhere, or under a tree, or wherever they're hiding. So maybe in the middle of the afternoon isn't the best place to do this, isn't the best time to do this, but I will bet you at night, they are everywhere here, after dark. I bet you the place is just scattered with them, barking all night, fighting amongst each other, different groups. Um, I bet it's a whole different world at night. One, one of the big problems they always have, these soy dog guys, is catching the dogs. I said that before. But here today, they got a lot of help from the locals. I think the, the dogs trust the, the villagers more. 
and they've all pitched in and given a hand. Even the kids, even the kids helped uh, helped either get the dog in the cage or pick it up. They lucked out. I don't know if it's because cameras are here, just people were very helpful. And he's got four of them. That was their goal for four dogs. So um, they're good to go. So that four, that four animals spayed or neutered just in the next year could maybe save another 20 that are on the street. We will try not to inject them because it, it's not good to inject, but we only uh, inject uh, the one that's very hard to crush. Right. But uh, we try not to inject like them. Ah, okay. The injection doesn't sterilize. Oh, no, no. It, no, no, not the injection like that. Oh. No, not for, uh, I mean, injection for to make them uh, so, sleep. Uh, sleep. Yeah, sleep. sleep. Okay. But, okay. All right. As usual, I got the whole thing wrong. <laughs> the injections are just if they can't catch them. They inject them to get them to put them to sleep. But that's dangerous. They don't really want to do that. But today, they didn't have to because they got the help, like I said, from the villagers. So they they put them in the cage they'll go back they'll do the operation for the spay or the neuter whatever one it is i thought the injection did the whole thing out <laughs> what do i know so yeah they're, they're only rounding up the the female dogs uh, the males they leave alone they spay the females and that solves the problem i didn't understand which or it wasn't clear but now it is they found they found one just in deplorable shape this this is what I used to see 30 years ago when I came like this dog. The eyes are infected, the genitals are, are infected. Uh, I, I, I doubt this, this dog can bear, even see, maybe very little if any. Um, so that's probably one of the ones they'll have to inject. Uh, but we go to, we go to the hospital to uh, make better. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. oh, sad day. Sad day. soy dog uh, foundation people to round up and spay animals usually what she does she's kind of a one-woman operation riding around on her motorbike in the hot spots where a lot of the dogs are she'll go and feed them uh, but at the same time she's kind of like a point person because she sees these areas if there's a lot of female dogs and a lot of explosion of population she'll work with them They'll go in, they'll, they'll grab up a bunch, spay them, kind of keep it under control. Nung tung gay one, nung tung gay one. Nung one day, five bags. Wow. She, she can go through five bags in one day. Wow. Just another one of Patia's problems. But, this is ongoing. It's just exasperated by the pandemic. Um, I really, I really think they've come a long way in this problem. Like I said, from 30 years ago. If you were here back then, maybe you remember. But sometime in the late 90s, 2000s, the internet uh, age, the economy boomed and it, it trickled all the way down to the silly dog. And all the outreach programs, the, the people feeding them, people had more money, they would feed the dogs, take care of the dogs. But, oh, uh, he's loading up the food. I guess he's going to deliver the food. Wow. <laughs> oh, deliver later. <laughs> 
Get them all loaded up and uh, she can do her thing. And maybe it helps a little bit. So yeah, here, here I think I'm getting her like a week's worth of food. Turns out it, it could potentially be for only one day. The day she, the day she goes out, she can use up to five bags. But uh, what a great lady, doing a great service. She does it all over the Pathia area. You might see her in a neighborhood uh, close by you. If you see her, say hi. Also, the, the folks at the Soy Dog Foundation, they do great work at soydog.org. Uh, that's, a, that's a very valid organization that helps out uh, the community. So if you want to support them, look them up. But I think the spaying, I think it only costs 500 baht or about $15 an animal. I think that's quite reasonable. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode off right here. And as usual, I'll thank you for watching. And until next time, bye for now.